What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's right, everyone. Savior from last week. He who stepped up to host the pop while Ben had the COVID. Oh, it finally, <clears throat> officially got me. It almost definitely, officially, like, unofficially definitely happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so of course, just as like a as like a quick refresher, uh, I was one of the few folk who was able to get married. This is an unconfirmed fact about few folk. I don't actually know if that's true or not. Mm. But I was married at Disney World in uh, January of 2020, just months before the pandemic, like, properly started. Yeah, before, like, real shutdowns started happening, before they, like, canceled the NCAA tournament. That's when it was really real for me yeah, yeah that, 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 <laughs> that's what that's what i was like oh man this is this is no this no is more no basketball thing. what <laughs> oh man <sighs> um but anyway so we we're of course at like a, a bit of an international hot spot if you will uh and therefore yeah, Epcot. Um, yeah. where yeah, yeah exa- <laughs> exactly jay i said i traveled the world didn't i <laughs> World showcase. <laughs> World showcase. Um, so while we're there, though, we go, we get married on a Monday um, and everything goes, you know, extremely well. It was all perfect and everything. We have a day afterwards where we're just kind of like getting to, you know, go out and explore the parks and everything and just sort of like recover from wedding day and then the next morning we're set to get up at like two o'clock in the morning 2 a.m uh to get ready for like our photo shoot where we actually go out like in our wedding attire and you know we're behind the scenes we're at magic kingdom at like you know 4 30 in the morning before sunrise yeah all the rest of it and everything and it's this point where both alice and i are like just colliding Mm. with a brick wall. I mean, like (laughs) both of us, like inside of my jackets, right? Like some of the most beautiful photos of me that have ever been taken, um, are like, you know, this professional photographer, Jacob shout out if you're listening. Um, and you know, we're, we're in this like unbelievably, cool place we're there while nobody's there and like my pockets are just like full of like tissues and cough drops and like no all sorts of stuff the whole time i'm thinking like man these are gonna be like photos that we look at for the rest of our lives when you look at the photos can you tell there's tissues in your pockets i can't okay very fortunately (laughs) yes no i can't which i'm so i'm so relieved about because i was like while we're out there and honestly like i don't know how much work they had to do after the fact or maybe it just felt worse than it looked, uh-huh. you know, um, and it, it's like, it, it's just, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to know what, what's actually going on. But I, I do remember I had this like total like apprehension to actually look at the photos when they were ready. Cause I was like, I'm, we're just going to look like we were sick. And so we got through the magic kingdom shoot. We were going over to Epcot and like, we're in the backseat of like, you know, the, like the minivan, uh, service or whatever that they were using to like move us from like place to place. And, um, Alice is sitting there like, you know, in the passenger seat and she's like, I need you to like, like, like allow my, like the back of my dress to like open up because she was like, I am like hyperventilating over here oh, just geez. Like from, yeah. So, and I, I think like, and of course, like the, the people that we're with, like none of us are really aware of like how severe the situation is about to be in three months time. Oh yeah. Like this uh, to, for, it, cause it's hard to imagine like a world now where like COVID isn't just super common well known, but I believe the uh the the if you were to read the room covid was like yeah there's some like bad virus in china yeah and that yeah. was that was about it like you knew you like you were hearing reports of of like lockdowns and stuff like that happening like internationally but sometimes when it comes to stuff like this like you know it's like you hear those reports but it the, i mean as bad as it sounds you're kind of like that like but like, is that going to affect me like you know like, I, yeah. like will i will i see you know how this goes and of course the answer is yes yep um but at this point in time like it it even would have been like a huge red flag if we had known just even like a little bit more about what was going on we probably would have just like canceled the rest of the shoot right then and there but of course we didn't and so you know like we get to epcot and well i think we ended up getting like two usable photos from all of epcot you know it was like it was like one of these things where in the course of time it took in the the speed at which it was progressing on us was such that like 4.30 4.30 in the morning to like 6 a.m. when we were doing Magic Kingdom, we were good. By the time 7 a.m. hit and we were at Epcot, it was like, 
it was too far too bad and so we get back to our room and again we're still just like not aware of just how bad it is um you know but like we've been up since like 2 a.m it's been like our wedding week we've been like you know communicating with everybody so we're just like exhausted so we're like we hit the bed and it's like one of these things you know we 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 had purchased park tickets and everything for the rest of the week and we're like well we'll just like take a nap we slept to the next day you know yeah and the next morning we're supposed to be getting up to go and meet the whole family to go do the like build your own lightsaber thing right at galaxy's edge which i was so excited for since then i've done the droids still haven't done the lightsaber but same ben because i too meanwhile was suffering over in my room as well (laughs) yes yeah so it's just like oh my gosh it was it was such a bummer it was so much pain it was so like uncomfortable but the thing has always been the case like you know people have like asked me obviously through the pandemic like did you end up getting it and i've just been like never confirmed but like i'm so certain right there wasn't there wasn't at that time like a confirmed case in the u.s but like the 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 thing is like whoever was the first confirmed case was definitely not like the first case Period. actually right yeah, yeah. like what were like, the odds of that be it's like yeah like then all the, the moment it got here we found it because you know what if it was the if they were the first person and they found them then guess what you quarantine that person we're good <laughs> yeah, well probably not so <laughs> the, other people are going to come into the country but um yeah i think i think pretty definitely the the wedding party got hit very hard because yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was bad. It was the right timing. It was the right kind of place. Yep, yep. And 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 just like everyone went down. I remember like in the weeks yeah. that followed. You know, we were all like, you know, we're like I think we went through. And I think maybe there were like seventy five attendees at my wedding total, mm-hmm. and I think we had gotten it up to like forty seven people had gotten sick. Yeah, you know, it was like this is just absolutely like absurd levels of numbers. And the other big one that I that I keep thinking back on is coming out of that and getting back into the gym. And I remember our trainer, Gabriel was like, um, he's like, nah, like it makes sense. You guys were like off for a week. You got married. You've been like, you know, you were sick a little bit, like, you know, all this stuff. And oh was, yeah. Even then when you were like, weren't feeling well the morning after it'd be like, well, yesterday was like the wedding. Like it was the most exhausting day of our life. And now we had to get up super early. Like, of course we're tired. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like there kept being like all these reasons to just like dismiss it. Yeah. And then, and then you look back on it and everything makes so much more sense. So anyway, in this past week, of course, I went to the, when we were young music festival, right in Vegas, in Vegas, mm-hmm. which was my first ever trip to Vegas, which was absolutely fascinating Yeah, in its own right, because we get there and we're, we're staying at a place that we chose due to its proximity to the Vegas festival grounds. Right. Okay. So, um, for one, typically like one of the things everybody kind of knows about Vegas is that like, it's not typically super expensive to stay there because like Vegas knows they're going to get you. Right. Once yeah. you're there, they're like, just get here, man. Just you just get here, and then we'll take your yeah, money. Yeah, it's like, well, we'll 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 cover your your room, we'll cover your drinks. Flights are cheap, you know, all the rest. Not the case when you've got the you know hundred thousand people flocking into right Vegas for this when we were young festival. So like all the prices were also skyrocketed. So on the whole, we ended up staying somewhere where we were like, this is convenient for the primary reason that we're there, and we're only in Vegas for like a grand total of like. 60 hours anyway right so like whatever it's no big deal so we stay at circus circus um and it's it's very it's a very interesting experience for me because like my whole life i feel like i've had these situations where someone has described like how cool something might be and i'm gonna go ahead and blame it on just like a rather vivid imagination but I feel like it is not an uncommon experience for me to have like built something up to be even grander in my head yeah. than something that already is grand will be. Yeah. And then have occasionally found myself like a little bit disappointed. Right. When sure. You, when you come to discover it's like, oh, like, you know, if you're that close to the front, then you can't hear anything because the speakers are so loud or, you know, like, yeah, something like, like that. It's like it's like you know, you would think that this was like the perfect thing and then it ends up being okay. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm having sort of that experience. Uh, no offense to the circus circus, you know, casino hotel space or anything like that. They, They have like trapeze acts and stuff like that, that go on like in the lobby. You can just like watch up, walk up and like 
watch them. Well, that's cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, you know, or, or like, um, like clowns doing performances and, and like there's, you know, like, a like a merry go round, but instead of the, like, uh, like horses and stuff, they're like slot machines. And so there's like really cool stuff going <clears throat> on, but like the ceilings also kind of low, the whole place smells like, you know, cigarettes and right, like stale yeah. beer and stuff. And, um, so I'm kind of like, Okay, like people talk about Vegas. There, there's a um, like an amusement park inside of the hotel, so like you oh, could wow. like, you could like ride a roller coaster if you so desired. Man, um, so yeah, like it's like it's cool, but like I have to admit, it was also like it was like a little bit like grungy. Uh huh. You know, maybe it's like when the Salem Fair comes to town. It, it's a little bit like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, you can go on the Tilt a Whirl and you can ride the Ferris wheel and they got all sorts of games everywhere. But also, you're like, I find it. I can't. I feel like maybe I should take a shower. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like the, it's just like a little bit of that. You know, or like yeah. you're, it's like they do have a roller coaster, but like I can see that it's being held up by like two by fours. Yeah. That are like stacked mm -hmm. over there. Right. Um. So anyway. It, I'm not really trying to complain about the accommodations because it was like super close to the festival grounds. It was so much fun, all the rest. But the next morning, uh, the festival doesn't actually start until like noon. So Alice and I get up at like 6 a.m. because we're just excited and we were like, all right, well, let's just go grab an Uber. We'll run over to like the Bellagio, you know, like right, yeah. I, these, I love these famous hotels I've heard of. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, one of my one of my all time favorite view, like movie viewing experiences, like I always talk about Force Awakens is up there for it. But one of the other ones for me was Ocean's Eleven. Oh, Ocean's which, Eleven. So good. Yeah. Which I watched at like mom and dad's house on the couch during the afternoon for the first time. Like I wasn't even in a theater, but I was like, this movie is awesome. Right. <laughs> but of course they're stealing from the Bellagio T Terry Benedict's casinos. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, let's go, let's go see the Bellagio. So we get the Uber, we run over, we go in, into the lobby and immediately I'm like, okay, when I got here, I'm not going to lie. I thought circus circus was what Vegas looks like showing off. And I walk into the Bellagio and I'm like, holy crap like this is like, wild like this is this is like my mind had some expectations as to like how over the top vegas was and this like took them and like shattered them wow it was like this is un freaking real like they have this just absolutely like uh the what is the centerpiece thing from things the cornucopia yeah right like you know they have they have like sort of a display a la cornucopia um and like you walk up to it and you're looking at everything and you're like these are real plants like all of this this like whole room the giant like waterfall in the middle it's all <coughs> real right there, there are like huge pumpkins like hagrid's hut pumpkins that weigh 1100 pounds right and it's like i'm looking at it and there's like a sign next to it and there's like a whole bunch of them all over the place given like different like weights and stuff i'm like they're real giant pumpkins right these are like not grown by engorgement charm pumpkins right but yeah. like but like actually like they are in fact gourds yeah i'm and they're gorgeous yeah <laughs> nice thanks nice thanks. crush uh, it um, how long have you been waiting to say that like 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 11 days <laughs> Sick last week, so bummed because uh, I didn't get to play. Make but my sitting point. on gorgeous for I know for a week and a half, man. Here's the thing: I went, I went to the this like unbelievable reunion of punk rock bands, like that is otherwise unheard of. It was a, it was something that people didn't even think was going to happen because it was so far fetched and just too over the top. And the thing that I'm excited about was was the gourds. Uh, which, yeah. had, which had nothing to do about it. Um, so anyway, that was that was like part of like my my initial Vegas experience was like sort of getting there, sort of having this like mild disappointment or else like, OK, I, like I sort of get it now. Like this is, you know, Vegas is it, it can't be what people describe it to be. And then the next morning was like, what the <laughs> actual heck? I booked the wrong hotel. <laughs> what is it? I know, I know. So if I ever go back, I was like, I'm going to have to stay. I'm going to have to make it a point to stay at like one of these places that like, right. that like really just showcases all that, that Vegas has to offer, I guess. Right. Um, anyway, so all that being said, though, uh, afternoon comes. Afternoon comes. The, the festival starts. The festival starts. I'm in my, my holographic zebra print uh, tank top hoodie tank top hoodie thank yeah. you thank you for concluding yes um and I'm, I'm like you know we're walking in to the festival grounds and of course you are just absolutely surrounded with like like outfits of nostalgia like it was every single person there almost exclusively was wearing like 
all black, you know, really? in, in some capacity. Yeah. And so like I get outside, I'm like walking with everybody and I'm wearing this holographic zebra top yeah. and I'm like, Oh gosh, Uh-oh. I'm going to stick out like a I have sword. showed up. I have dressed poorly. I, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, did I do this wrong? Like, did I, did I make an oopsies and like, and, and like chose the wrong attire? And I think, I think ultimately what I discovered throughout the day is that that was not the case. Yeah. I had so many people come up to me. I think it was driving the girls crazy because like they had, they, they did such a great job. Both Sammy and yeah. um, Alice did of like looking the part. Right. And, getting and, their like grunge princess look on. Uh, Dude, such that is like the most perfect description of how they were. Like that, yeah, that grunge princess, grunge princess. I love that. Okay, I love that. Um, and Mike looked awesome too. Mike was there. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Also, Mike was here. Uh, also, Mike was there. And Mike, Mike listens to the pop. I want to make sure he gets his shout out. Um, but like, I did, I did have people coming up to me, uh, like throughout the whole day, basically, be, just being like, like some version of look at you. Like, just look at you. <laughs> you did it. I know. My favorite, though, was this one guy comes up to me and he's got his hands on his head and he's looking at his girlfriend. And he's like, and he's just gesturing at me like, like, like speechless. And he goes, and he, he just turns around and goes, only in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, did I just bellage you with this guy? Did I just be- uh, I I met someone's expectations for the city. If you're looking for a good word, gord gis Gord I hear is is, is, is yeah. trending That's, right now. Is that how you wanted people to describe you as <laughs> gorgeous? <laughs> gorgeous bed <laughs> similar to that of a pumpkin that has been unexpectedly actually grown to a thousand pounds in weight um yes that is that is the description that i was that i was going for um so the outfit went over well excellent glad I'm to hear to say, it i'm trying to say yep it was, it was positive positive vibes throughout um but otherwise it was avril did not play while i was there no i know, I know everybody was on the edge of their seats they were like did ben did ben see uh, who was my who was my all American uh, rejects all American or Avril. rejects or Avril yeah and Avril did not perform the night that I was there which I was super bummed about but uh, it was all good because I did go and see the all American rejects and they were absolutely amazing it was like the most I was so impressed with how absurdly like self aware their humor was like they they would make comments that were like you know like don't lie when you heard us on the radio you totally wrote us off but you're here now so it's totally fine yeah and then they would like dive into a song and it was oh it was all it was all so good they got like six songs in i'd known every song most of the words of the song and they're like bet you think we don't have one more you know the words to and they ran into it and it was like how is this? How is this even? How do I know so many All American Rejects right. songs? This is like what you like. I think what it's so easy to like make a disconnect between like what you hear on the radio and then like what you hear about like the celebrity themselves. That like you know you hear their music and then you like hear about stuff in their personal lives and it's sort of like oh yeah they sometimes like in my mind it's like, yeah they sometimes go into a recording studio and get more songs out and make a new CD. And then they get on with their lives and they go on towards them. But it's like you, it's so easy to forget that like they they have done concerts hundreds, thousands of times. And it's like their skill set is so far beyond just like, yes, we are good musicians. It is like, they are performers and entertainers. Yes. And they're like, they're extremely good at it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, And I mean, it's like, even that was something that like throughout the day, it was incredible to see, the different ways in which the different musicians were capable of uniquely getting the audience like super involved. Uh, we saw Hawthorne Heights and they were like absolutely fantastic at this particular thing. It was like, you know, it was the first person I saw like come off the stage and go and like, just like run into the audience. They're like just surrounded by people. And yeah, it was, that was, that was ridiculously cool. 303. Oh, same yeah, thing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. They're just like throwing celery sticks out into the audience. <laughs> it's like, why? Well, I, I don't know. It's possible. Like, this is like one of those things where it's like, maybe I don't know the full picture and this is like much more of a, um, like thing that they do, yeah. which, which very well could be the case, but like, it is such a common thing for, the like musicians to go up there and like they'll have like their set list that they'll ball up and like throw into the audience uh afterwards as like a like a souvenir that right get, yeah or, like, someone gets a set list uh yeah like a set list or guitar picks was another one or drumsticks or or mm-hmm. you know any of those like little things and so i feel like what what 303 
realize is that people are just stoked and they'll like fight over anything. So they, they came out with it. They came out there with like six bushels of celery and they're just heaving them to the audience. And of course the audience is all like dive bombing right. this piece oh, of celery. celery. <laughs> it's like, there's, it's like that won't last. Like that will, it's like, it may have wilted from the time it left the guy's hand yeah. till it like made it to the, to us out there in the, in the stands. Um, you know, but it was it was just like such good self aware humor. Got to see Jimmy Eat World play uh, the middle and sweetness, which was both just like my mind exploded. Oh, you know, nice. it was like I, I think I think that um, sweetness like might be the just like the catchiest song that's ever been written. Mm. Um, it's just like one of those things. Where I'm like I, I feel like if I can go back to the very first time I ever heard it, it sounded like I had already heard it a hundred times prior. Ooh, you know, it's that's like a skill. I know, I know. Yeah. It's like one of those songs that's just. That's just so great. Um, anyway, so on the whole, music festival was super fun and amazing, and I got to see so much stuff. And it totally, I was like, maybe, maybe it's officially time for Ben to get like more into music. Maybe, like, like so, I, so I don't, I don't always fail at so it. So we're not so bad at music. So we're not so bad at music. Yeah, we, we typically, typically pretty bad at music. Mm, well, um, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, we're not so great. Yeah, but, but, well, you know, at music, at music, at music. Yeah. Maybe other things. Maybe too. other things we're okay at. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be. Um, but then, of course, the fallout. <coughs> then you got COVID. And then I got COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So that was less fun um, for, for sure. Uh, I will say that uh, it seemed like on the whole, I moved through the paces pretty evenly. Everything. Yeah, you seemed like you didn't like you had COVID, but like the worst symptom. Like it seemed like for you, the worst thing about it was that you were contagious yeah precisely that yeah. yeah yeah alice got it worse and i would actually say it was it was a good thing because i would say that my symptoms on the whole were mild enough that i don't even know that i would have like tested myself oh, okay but like it was one of these things where alice was so bad that we were like really focused on that mm -hmm. and then she tested positive and then you know it was like well from there now i've been like fully exposed to the person i'm living with and mm -hmm. and all the rest so um Got through it for the most part, but the, I would say the, the interesting thing was that like starting, uh, I ended up being like out of office for four days total plus a weekend. So I had like six days of, you know, this, this like quarantine process Yeah, and it was, it was flat out fascinating to me just how quickly I felt like I, I went back to like the very, very, very early stages of quarantine back in 2020. Yeah. Like there was, I think that there was this brief period right when quarantine started, when everybody started like the working from home thing where it was like, you know what? I'm actually super productive when I work from home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, like I'm getting more done than I do at the office. No right now. distractions. I know this is great. So I think what I got to do is like, I got to work like several days from home and I was like, man, I'm just like firing on all cylinders right now. This is awesome. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm like laser focused and I feel like probably another two weeks and I probably would have started like really slacking off a maybe, little bit. Maybe or, this is the thing like every like three months or something, everyone just works at home for like a week. Maybe that's something. And then it's like, yeah, oh man, I got, I got like completely focused for that week. And then we came back in. I know. Yeah. Now we're, now we're back to back now to we're back. Yeah. yeah. So maybe not a bad idea. Not a maybe. Bad idea. Yeah. 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 It's like, you just got to have that like variety, you know, to like, yeah, your, just your... spice it up. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Go work on top of a mountain for a day. Exactly. Maybe you know, bring your down. laptop. Probably don't get good Wi-Fi up there, but that's what hotspots are for. As long as they work. Exactly. And if not, bring a helicopter and attach that helicopter to a satellite with an extension cord. Yeah. Or, or something. I don't actually know why a helicopter is super important for this. No. I also don't think that satellites accept extension cords. Plus, <laughs> You need quite a cord. <laughs> you need quite a cord. Plus the satellites move yeah. pretty fast. Yeah. Up there. Um, anyway, so I got through COVID. What's new with you? <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Um, let's see. Last last we spoke, I was about to go to a Weird Al concert. Yeah. I believe. Uh, I think it was on your birthday. It was on my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, that was um, that was pretty fun. Uh, me and Beth. It was one where like, I think when we booked the tickets, Beth, like, I don't know. She just like completely forgot about it. Like I put it on the calendar and it was coming up and she's like, what is this? Why does it say Weird Al? And I'm like, because we bought tickets. And she's like, I don't remember that. And I'm like, well, I put it on the calendar because we bought it. I thought you put it on the calendar because maybe you wanted to go to it. I was like, why? Wow, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but uh, no, we bought the tickets. We went. It was super fun. It was a really, uh, it was a very, very unusual kind of tour. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, basically, uh, he he is not 
playing like any parodies, not playing like really any of the hits. It's like all originals and stuff. Yeah, which is like <clears throat> it, it depending on what type of like weird owl fan you are might be no big deal or you might be like all right. Yeah, it was the, it it was a very like it was it was a little surreal because like I think it's like the kind of thing that only weird owl can pull off. Yeah. You know, yeah. so like it very much felt like what he had done was like, you know, a lot of like a lot of um like older bands and stuff, like after they've stopped like releasing new albums all the time, they'll just still go on tour and just, you know, play all the hits. And, right. you know, we'll, we'll just go, you know, we'll have fun. We'll just tour around. It'll be great. It seemed like that was a little bit what he was doing. Um, but as ever with Ear Now, he was doing like a parody of that. So instead of doing exactly what you want him to do, he's like, nah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mess with you. <laughs> but like everyone there is like sort of aware of it. So it's like, yeah, and you're in on the joke because right. you're a big Weird Al fan. And the thing about like people who are big Weird Al fans is like they've listened to everything on every CD ever. Like I, that's always the that's always I think one of the unique draws about Weird Al like um, CDs in particular. Like if I anytime I ever got like a CD for like a band or anything, which was not often, right. but like typically it was because I wanted to listen to like a song yeah. or two songs that I knew, and like maybe by the time I listened to the CD, I'd like a third one or something. But like with the Weird Al CD, you buy it because you want to hear the parody of every single song on there, so you listen to the whole thing. Yep. Yeah, and it's certainly ones will stand out, and so he was definitely playing the ones that uh, had not, I guess, stood out a ton over time. But so I was really bummed because I know growing up, one of our <coughs> all time favorite, like Weird Al original classics yes. was Albuquerque. Oh my gosh. I know. Yes. I was like, if ever, if ever, this is the time he might play Albuquerque. Cause I'm like, I, I like I, anytime I've like heard about him going on tour, it's always been, yeah, for like a new album. So like, he's not going to play it. And it's not like the most beloved song ever, but like this, this might be Plus the time. It's, it's 11 minutes long. It's 11 so minutes it's like, long. And yeah. It, and it's just absolutely absurd. It's like a fever dream of a song. It it's is. Just it's like, so funny. That is definitely my favorite weird house song of all time. We'll, we'll link it in the show notes. Yes. Yeah, so if you, you have haven't listened minutes, to Albuquerque, yeah. oh man, I think our mom hated that song. I think she did because <laughs> it was, I think from the, from our, our childhood home, to like our elementary school i want to say it took like eight minutes to get there yeah which would mean that like you couldn't even listen to the whole song on our drive to school which meant the only thing that we listened to on our way to school was most of the song albuquerque oh man probably quote it once a week though oh yeah i know it's so I, know, fun. Yeah. I mean with 11 minutes worth of song there's like a bazillion quotable moments in it. it's, it's pretty great it's, pretty it's great. so fun unfortunately he did not play albuquerque i was really hoping for it but whatever whatever it's okay it's fine it was still really funny um i had it's like i hadn't heard all the songs a ton but i had heard all of them like at least once or twice before so i was okay. like and and the good news is even if you don't know the words as long as you can hear what he's saying it's just hilarious because it's because you know yeah. it's a comedy show <laughs> right like things are meant to be funny yeah yeah that's that's really great and this is um oh shoot i totally just lost my train of thought Weird Al. Oh, yeah. So the thing that's interesting about like the way that he's sort of like paradized, if you will, like this kind of tour is that, of course, there's like the biopic. That's a parody of biopics. Yes. About Weird Al played by Daniel Radcliffe that like just came out last week. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, Weird. The Al Yankovic story available yeah. on Roku exclusively <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Even that even that feels like they were like, what? What is the what is the service no one has? Let's put it there. I know, I know. This is that's really funny. Um I've, yeah. I've had a bunch of people reach out to me. I guess like my fandom of Weird Al reaches like in a way that like stuck with people. Yeah. Because I've probably had five people message me and be like, Hey, have you seen the Weird Al movie yet? Like I know you're yeah. a fan. <laughs> <laughs> like not yet not um, yet i'm working on getting my roku subscription I, set up i know well i don't even think you need a subscription is the thing like i think you could download the roku app for free and the movie is available for free on the app oh wow so i think okay. it's pretty available okay. but like even that it's just like i i feel like they called roku and they were like really us 
<laughs> Exclusive? <laughs> well, of course. Don't mind if we do. <laughs> You're never going to believe who just called. Right, right. Oh, my gosh. It's a, Yeah, and it's funny because it's like in the scheme of like musicians, the biopics that you've seen come out and everything, like they're, they're all for like some of the most iconic musicians that have ever existed. Yeah. And so like to throw Weird Al in with that, while he's also like iconic on his own for his own reasons and incredibly well known, um, it's like... Uh, I don't know. It, it it is it is anywhere else. It probably would not have immediately come across as like the same level of <clears throat> I don't even know anticipation. Maybe as like yeah. Elvis. Sure. Yeah. You know, or, or or something like that. Rocket Man. Who else? Who else have they done recently? Oh boy, a whole yeah. bunch of these. Yeah, they did a bunch. Yeah, uh, they did Elton recently, right? I, no, you just said Rocket Man. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I feel like I feel like they're gonna need. I don't know. We, we, we need to watch it. Yeah, for sure. Need to watch Weird, the Al Yankovic story, available exclusively on Roku. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> but the concert was very funny, so I was I was glad we went, even though um, I didn't know. They, he did play the one I do the most that I know that was like one that uh, you that I know we all listened to a ton was the night Santa went crazy. Uh, dude, literally yeah. you told me that you didn't even sing it. And for the past week of my life, I've just been like, the night yeah, Santa <laughs> went <crazy."> so catchy. <laughs> I noticed like a kind of a theme in the songs that he that ended up making it into the show. It seemed like a lot of times it was like a series of like violent things happening in the songs. Oh, interesting. Was, yeah, like oh, these are maybe the ones that don't click as well or something, or like just a series. Yeah, it was like a series of bad events happening. So which like in that song, like you know, Santa's going crazy and he's blowing up the North Pole and stuff. So yeah, it's just yeah. sort of, yeah. But it's a very like specific kind of imagery that like spreads across his music. Yeah, no, that's fair. That, yeah. That's like an interesting like through line that I probably wouldn't have ever like specifically like picked up on. Yeah, but I don't think like, I would have either. If you just paid attention, it's like, of course it's there. Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, that's really fun. Yeah. It, what is the Jurassic Park song? Is that a parody of something? Oh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park is frightening, frightening in the dark. dark. Yeah, it's like one of those like I only know it from the weird. <laughs> I know, version. I know. Yeah, everybody's like, oh my gosh, was that like, was the no. most cringe thing we've ever seen. Hashtag the guys fail at music. Ah, uh, boy, mark that one on your bingo card. Okay, yep. so the other big thing that you did whilst I was whilst I was away in the old QT land, yeah, um, was we had purchased tickets for Dad's birthday, yes. to go to a Virginia Tech football game. Mm-hmm. Um, back in September. Right. And I was very excited and optimistic at the time that uh, maybe the Hokies would have a good year, which is which has not happened. Not happened. Even at all. Worst I, season in two decades. Yeah. Is it, is it the worst? I was trying I was trying to tell Alice this the other day, and I wasn't <clears> sure <throat> if it was just since I've started being a fan, which would have happened in 1999, uh, or just literally since we've been alive. But as far as I can tell, it's the worst season that they've had since I've been a fan. At bare minimum. Uh, that is for sure true. Um, the stat I heard on the radio that was like the the guy trying to put like a real positive spit on it was that coming into this past weekend, the Hokies were on a five game uh, skid. Yeah. And they were like, well, well, here's the only silver lining is that if the Hokies lose today is that the last time the Hokies had a season where they lost six games in a row was during Frank Beamer's first season as head coach. Okay. So it was like, well, well, God, I hope that's the case and that we're at the beginning of the next like Frank Beamer type era and we just have to go through some growing pains because they sure did lose again and now we're on a six game <laughs> losing streak, which yeah. sucks. Yeah. That that is it feels a little it feels a little straw graspy, but I also feel like I'm okay with it. Um, you know, yeah, you know like, what? When it comes to being a sports fan, you become your most like irrationally um positive like what what am i looking for here yeah, like you you're like, you irrationally optimistic when it comes to your sports team yeah absolutely like no matter how toxic the relationship gets you're like but maybe next year but maybe next year this is, i mean i would even tell you that back in the day like there'd be 3 minutes left in the game they'd be 3 touchdowns down and i'm like okay Okay, hold on. Let me think this through. It's right. still possible right. that we, we come can back. We can do this, okay? Right, right. Have we moved the ball 40 yards all game? No. Can we get three touchdowns in three minutes? Probably. It's like, look, all we need to do 
is get like 90 yards down the field. And as long as we get the touchdown and the extra point or, to, or even better would be the two point conversion as well. Right. Even less likely. And then we'll just recover an onside kick, do it again. Yeah. Two point conversion. And then all we have to do from there is a field goal. Right. And so that's like, basically it. You know what? We're in it. We're, we're in it. It's, you know, it's a done deal. What? But the, it's so funny because like, I feel like the, I feel like humanity as like a rule is, it seems generally less optimistic about everything. Uh, but when it comes to your team, you know, basically like, like in like grappling with, with certain failure, yeah. you're like, now oh, we got this. <clears throat> we got it. We now, got now to be a hokey fan on the other hand, especially as of late is to understand that no Matt is to understand that that exact possibility is very likely to happen against you. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, I mean, the, there's nothing better. Look here, here's just a little pro tip for you. Um, if you just want to see like a thrilling game uh, and, and you don't know anything about sports, you have no allegiances, just figure out who the Hokies are playing this weekend and then be like, you know what? I'm going to become fans of like, let's say Duke, because I think that's who we play next. And it's like big Duke fam. You, you, you know, what you, you know what you're going to get to watch? A total nail biter situation where your team comes back right at the end and wins. <laughs> that is what has happened the past two weeks. And it has been. So frustrating. Both games were lost by a single point after having a like double digit lead going into the fourth quarter. That's yeah, been, yeah. Uh, it's been it's been <coughs> a rough season here in uh in uh, in Hokieville. Let me tell you, especially because growing up, it was like a foregone conclusion that they would have a ten win season almost every season. It's true. Like it's true. Such glory. Such such greatness the glory such, days it was it was a given anyway the, the okay so the thing is though is that so we bought these tickets for our dad for his birthday and it was gonna be really cool because we're gonna like all get to go like you know the three boys and dad and it was gonna be like a fun yeah it's gonna be you yeah know. me you dad and ty exactly um and even even as like the season was progressing getting worse and worse we were like we were excited still because we had bought like front row 50 yard line tickets yeah like like great seats yeah so it was like and like this never had like jay and i used to be season ticket holders and like very quickly you find out that like these seats it's like you there's like the the face value of the ticket but most of the time you can only buy those tickets if you are season ticket holders and then like extra gold platinum diamond encrusted members right like who have been season ticket holders and slowly upgraded themselves year after year for two decades exactly Yeah. yeah it's like so it's like the fact that you can get in them ever for any reason is like you know kind of rarefied air and i was like worst case scenario i'll get to go and sit like front row and watch my team lose closer and yeah like, that'll, that'll be fun right and of course i don't get to go but you got to go i did get to go yes i was not sick <clears throat> with covid right and it meant that you got to go to your very first uh virginia tech football game with lukester yes which i know is very cool because i even know that one of the cool things that that did come of this is that when you were young Dad had brought you to Virginia Tech football games, and I know it was kind of like a father-son bonding thing, and you know potentially even contributed to your ultimate decision to go to Virginia Tech. Oh as yeah, a for sure it did. Yeah, no so, doubt. <laughs> like very impactful thing that had happened in your yeah. childhood, your youth. Yeah, uh, and so you got to give that to Luke for the first time. So how did that go? Well, it, yeah, it was really it was really cool. So the yeah the way it shook out, obviously you didn't go because you had COVID, and then Tyler opted not to go because you would come to the office a couple of days uh, last week and were around me, and Tyler didn't want to risk being around me because maybe I had been exposed, but um, you know, I tested negative, so it, yeah. I, which is totally fine by Ty if you don't want to, you know. It, it, it's definitely <laughs> that like that was the other thing I was gonna say about like the, the pre-quarantine period is how quickly you start to understand what the word viral means. Yeah. It's like, okay, so like if I touch this person, that person touches three people, and those three people to oh I see. Yeah. yeah, this is a problem real fast. So yeah, yeah it's it's, it's definitely one of, of those control. right. And Tyler does have like a like a newborn at home too. Yes. So there's yes. he's got good reason to uh be extra cautious. Yeah, yeah so Tyler and then it was suddenly just going to be me and dad. And I was like, there's no way we bought four, <laughs> four of the best tickets in the stadium, but only two of them are getting used. And uh, so I decided, I, you know, I asked, I was like, do you care if we bring Luke? And he was like, that's a great idea. So, um, yeah, we told uh, Luke. Uh, the morning of, he didn't even know. We kind of decided the night before. Luke actually went to um, Disney Junior Live the night before at the concert venue he used to work at. Oh, you nice know. venue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very fun. Very fun. I think he had it. So he had like a great two days there of live entertainment. That's amazing. Yeah. We woke up and it was like we're going to a hokey game, and he was like, uh, he was pretty excited about that because you know he know he knows we like the Hokies and stuff. 
Um, you know, I, I always watch it when it's on TV. And uh, but the problem was Luke didn't have any like hokey gear somehow. Oh, which is yeah. A real bummer. That real is, bummer. Yeah. But uh, we got uh, was it uh, me? Uh, me and Luke went and picked up Dad. We're driving up, and you know Luke has to go potty. But you know we stop at like a gas station. You know Dad wants to like make sure this is like a really good experience for Luke. So it was like just pick out anything you want in the store. And you know Luke, this was pretty adorable. Is that he went and, like he picked out like a bag of like. Um, like uh, cheese doodles, I guess, like Cheetos brand cheese doodles or yeah. whatever. Good pick, but good then, pick. yeah, and then he was like, he had two, and he was like, well, I think you only need one. He's like, no, this one's for you, and this one's for you. And it was like, oh, that's so sweet. You want to make sure we all have our own bag of cheese doodles. Oh, great. <laughs> so, that's pretty adorable. And that was pretty cute. So you got to have cheese doodles too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I still have cheese doodles. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it didn't break. It didn't crack mine open at the car. Me and dad. Me and dad got like so, like a, like a box of Entenmann's donuts though. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that, you guys were living it up. Living it up. We had donuts. We had cheese noodles. We're going to the tech game. Front row seats. Front row seats. Look out, y'all. Who needs tailgating? Yeah. So we decided not to do much tailgating because like I didn't think Luke would quite have the patience for it. Yeah. That's didn't right. want to like bust out a grill and like get some hot dogs going or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> based on what I know about the times that I've grilled hot dogs for Luke. Yeah. I always, act, I put the, the black marks on. Yeah. Them. He doesn't like the black marks. Luke, right. Yeah. This is the thing. Like everyone else likes a nice grilled dog. Luke's like microwave mine for 15 <laughs> seconds. Best food on the planet. <laughs> like whatever you say, son. Uh, but anyway, so we get there, we park. Um, we had pretty good parking too, like right next to the stadium. That was, that was great. But, um, the hokey drum line, um, one of the things they do leading or throughout the month of November at the home games is they will walk around the different tailgates and do like a Hokies for the hungry type thing yep. where they'll like come to your tailgate and they'll like surround your car and like do like a whole big performance and stuff uh, for like everyone at your little party. And then hopefully like you donate some money and stuff and they give the money to, you know, feed um hungry people yeah exactly <laughs> all very good all very good so as we parked it that's happening like two rows over so we're like oh this is awesome and we like you know uh I, you know bring luke over there and he's like so excited to see him and he's like oh the symbols i love the symbols and he's like can i use them and i'm like well no you can't go like touch their instruments or anything oh, right 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's like if I've learned anything from Name of the Wind, it's bad form to ask to yeah. to hold another musician's instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what they're playing, but we can watch. We can watch. Right. So that was fun. Uh, then we went. There's like this big tent where you can buy like a bunch of like gear and stuff. So we got Luke like a nice hokey hoodie. We got him a little football. We got him a little foam finger. You know, he's like you did oh. the whole thing. Yeah, we you, I was like, you, oh yeah, we're doing the whole thing. Bust like, out yeah, all yeah, stuff. We gotta get amazing. it. We gotta get it going here. Um, and then there's like this, um, <clears> like even as many hokey games as we've been to, there's a feature of them that we've never really taken advantage of because we've never brought kids but there's like this big practice field i think for like lacrosse and stuff um where it's like artificial turf and they just set up like a bunch of tents and like inflatable castles and there's like a you know some like like a little mini concert happening with like a singer on stage and you know you uh, i don't know cornhole boards and stuff like that right right just yeah like mm. kind of generalized go General, in, interactive yeah, type like fun very yeah. light fairgrounds or something something very good for like kids to run around at like yeah. pre-game right. or whatever so we did that and luke was having an absolute ball there and like he was just taking his little football and he was just throwing it to nobody just throwing it and then retrieving it it reminds but, me of that <clears> gif <throat> i forget who it's from i think it's from like peanuts or something but they're yeah. like like throwing a frisbee and then it's like walking over and picking it up and then throw oh it's from the simpsons oh <laughs> anyway yeah Good, yeah, g- great gif. That's pretty much what he was Kid doing. Kid playing by himself. Yeah, and uh, Luke's been to a few like festivals and stuff where like they have the wheels you can spin and you know get a prize, and he loves that. You know, oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, so he walks over to this one uh, booth that looked like they were like in the process of clothing da- closing down. Um, but he, you know, he spins the wheel and the guy's like, you know, he like looks over and just like spins it over until it like hits the jack spot, jackpot spot. And he's like, Oh, look at that. You win. And so we got this like, uh, very like pretty cool, like hokey beanie to wear. So he was really happy about that. Dude, that feels like a <coughs> Disney magic moment a yeah. little bit to me. It's like, you know. This is the type of thing that could have gone like mundanely and it's yeah. like attached with it being like his first trip and like everything yeah. going the way it's going. It's like that feels like a like a very solid piece of like, yeah, you know, fate yeah. intervening. Like, oh, yeah. Cool. Got the fun hat. Got the awesome. grand prize. That's awesome. Got the grand prize at the, at the spin wheel. Awesome. Yeah. So that was really good. 
Um, and from there, we made our way into the stadium. And there's all there was really cool, like you know, carrying him like up the little ramp onto the field because it's like it's such like a big like woo, reveal moment, right? Yeah, so that was pretty cool. And he was just like, whoa, that was fun. Um, and then you know, instead of going up the stairs, we got to go down the stairs, down Ew. to the very front row, which was like even even as like I read the ticket, and it said like row A, and I'm like, okay, that's got to be the first row. But even as I'm like, even as I read it, I'm like reminded of every time I've been to like the airport and you're like oh group two and they're like all right first priority priority boarding and then it's like and anyone with a, a history of the military and then group one and then uh group like gold yeah, star yeah. members and then <laughs> gold star members and then premium platinum members and then uh, american airline <laughs> rewards points and, and then it, group it, two right yeah if, <laughs> if like, anybody's left group two can board now <laughs> yeah, you're like oh well this was misleading right yeah no that's yeah that, that's so true that, that's like my this and I had the exact same thing too, because like, we, when we bought the tickets, it was like row A, and we told Dad, you know, like we said, because I think we were uh, not together on his birthday. Was I at the festival? I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Um. But so we sent him like a picture, you know, of like the stadium from like the view of the seats and everything. Yeah. And it was like front row, fifty yard line. And Dad's like front row, and I was like. As long as that's what row A means. Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm prepared for there to be like, and now welcome to negative alphabet. Right, you yeah, know? yeah, right. Yeah. Now you're on row negative three. And you're like, oh, I see what you've done here. That's stupid. I was so like, I wasn't really prepared to believe it until we were sitting in the seats that we were in the genuine front row. Yeah, I, I desperately wanted pictures because yeah. I, was, I was like, just tell me that we did the right thing here. Yeah, tell me like we did, we the did right not thing. mess up. But indeed, we are on the very front row. Not necessarily like 50, 50 yard line, more like 40 yard line. Okay. But okay. like whatever, doesn't matter. We are so we're on the um, away side, though. So like we're um, right behind the Georgia Tech football team nice. for the majority of the game. Well, not for the for the whole game. Yeah, <laughs> what we're we talking about. <laughs> <laughs> switch sides. <laughs> yeah, no. So we're right behind the Georgia Tech football team. And though the only uh, so we the, we encounter like a slight hurdle as we as we sit down, it was like almost like as if gravity was timing it out. But like as our butts hit the seat, so did the rain hit the ground. Oh, and it was like man. here it had been like threatening to rain all day. And it had been like a question mark all week. But even as we were driving up there, it was like looks like the sun's coming out, like the clouds are kind of breaking. And then sure enough, as soon as soon as we sat down, here comes the rain. And it's just like Boy, that's a bummer. Because also we wanted to get into the stadium early so that we you know we didn't miss like Enter Sandman. We you know want to make sure like Luke has got like you know he's like there, he gets the full experience of it. Yep. And stuff. So we got to like so th that means though that like you know before even that starts, so just like twenty minutes. We're like, oh gosh, now we're gonna be like. We're just going to be sitting here in the rain for 20 minutes, like <coughs> in the damp, in the damp. Now, fortunately, it was never like pouring rain. It was like more of like just like I would say like heavy drizzle, okay. you know. So fortunately, Luke's hoodie was coming into play. And he put the beanie on over the hood. Nice. So, you know, a couple of layers of protection there. I mean, you know, naturally, keep yeah. Nice and dry. Very clever. Yeah, no bad. And there's still like stuff happening on the field that you can watch, like the core cadets is out there doing their thing and they're yeah. doing the color guard and they have like a flyover and all that stuff. But um like the front row has a few different experiences to it. First of all, as far as like the pregame goes, like so before each tech game, they'll have like all the everyone gets like out on the field and they get ready to go. And like before they do enter Sandman, which is like the best thing in all of college football. Yeah, th this is like, like one of those <laughs> things I feel like. Yeah, we're like, we're like enter Sandman. It's like, is that you mean like the Metallica song? Yeah, and the it's Metallica like, song. They mean the Metallica they song. They mean the Metallica song. And let me tell like, I don't care where you go and I don't care how good your football team is, whatever. If you can ever be in Lane Stadium for enter Sandman, like do it. Yeah. It is. It is awesome. I, I would say the them storming out of the tunnel is the only thing second to it is like when tech is on like a comeback run and it's like fourth quarter, 17 seconds left and they have like one play and they just start blasting it through the yeah. speakers and it's like, Oh my gosh, it's pretty epic. Yeah. It's so cool. yeah, like you always want to make sure you're there for that. But like to like hype you up even before that, they get like all the cheerleaders out there and they have these big signs and they get like half the stadium to yell, let's go. And the other half to yell hokey. And it's like, that's always really fun. But let me tell you, when you're in the front row, you have got like 35,000 people behind you yelling in At your direction. Your, yeah. And you were like right there. So it was 
like i mean it's always pretty loud but it was like extra loud and like i'll tell you what luke was not there for it. oh no <laughs> like, which is totally fine like i would my recommendation to anyone bringing their like less than like probably seven or eight year old to a football game would be like bring headphones like i so badly wish i'd brought headphones because yeah. the sound is just i mean it's i mean it is loud there's no doubt and then they start playing Inner Sandman. Of course, these are like speakers that fill the whole stadium and yeah. the whole place goes crazy. And Luke is just like, ah. And then every time Tech scores, they they shoot a cannon. Yeah, they shoot a cannon. They do that after the national anthem, too. And the ones after the touchdowns aren't as bad because that one happens outside the stadium. The national anthem one, the skipper is in the stadium. So that one's pretty loud. Yeah. That's uh, the name of the cannon. <clears throat> that's the name of the cannon. Yeah. And then the um they did the flyover, which is like, I was so excited. Like when they said they were doing one, cause like you get to see up in these cool planes and like, you know, like, Oh, that'd be cool. But it was so cloudy. You couldn't really see the planes. So, uh, like you could see them briefly. It was like, Oh, look, there they are. But like, you know, by the time Luke looked up, it was like, oh, I can't see him. But then what happens is like, you know, the giant, you know, sound wave comes yeah. afterward. You can hear that. <laughs> so there was a little bit of like trouble at the start. It's raining. It's super loud. I think Luke felt like very out of control. And it was like a little wet and stuff. It's all very understandable. Um, you know, we went up, we got him, we got him a Sprite. He was very excited about that. Oh, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Got him, got him a Sprite, you know, um, once, once, once kickoff happened. And, uh, then for like, a, I would say like a majority of like the first quarter and like maybe halfway through the second quarter, he was just sort of like curled up, like on my lap, just sort of like, uh, like, can it be quiet? But then, um, sort of getting towards halftime there, uh, they started like playing like music just between downs and stuff. Yeah. And so I would like stand up with him and just sort of be like, whoa, and you know, kind of like dance some. And he started getting like a lot more into that. Like he was having a lot of fun. I think just like playing with me. Then. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and then, you know, and then they scored a touchdown. And that was good. It was like, yeah. And he was like, whoa, you know, so that was fun. He was excited about that. And then um, because you're on the front row before halftime, you know, like the band is getting ready to go do their like, you know, halftime show or whatever. Right. So like they, you know, they walk down in front of the stands and when you're on the front row, they're walking right in front of you, Yeah. which is really cool. Um, so you can like walk, you know, you can like reach out and they'll like high five everyone and stuff, which is there, neat. Yeah. And like, sure enough, guess what was coming, Ben? The symbols. The, they're back. <laughs> they're back. And I was like, Luke, look, the symbols. And he was like, oh man. Cause like he didn't want to high five anyone, but then he saw the symbols coming. And he was like, yeah. And what's cool is that they reach up and high five you with the symbols. So that's awesome. He was pretty excited about that. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. And that then it was really like, cool. oh, mommy was in the marching band. So he was like, like watching the halftime show and stuff. And then most of the whole second half had like really led up on the rain. And uh, it was just that was he was like very into it, very excited the whole time. So that was all really positive experience uh, going into the fourth quarter. Tech was winning pretty handily. Uh, yeah. They managed to blow it, which <laughs> was a was, real bummer. I mean, course. the second half had been so good. There was a like a 90-yard punt return for a touchdown, which everyone, I mean, Tech especially loves like a good special teams play. Yeah. That's like Beamer ball. It's, like it's, it's kind of like what the, the team is like known for. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that that, that was excellent. There was a pick six from like the five-yard line. That was fantastic. Um, you know, the offense was doing well. And then I, they almost just, I mean, they just went out of their way to lose it in the fourth quarter. That's all I could say. It's, it was I a mean, real bummer. It's, it's about <clears throat> what I feel like I've come to expect. But yeah. on the whole, I mean, like, it's it's really cool. It's extremely exciting to me that, like, that like this next phase, this next era yeah. of, of like our lives, maybe, yeah. and maybe like for like Luke's life yeah. is like beginning. Uh, it's it's just cool to like get to see what that's going to like look yeah. like be like. Yeah, it was. Uh, there was a, there was one other like tiny cool thing that happened where like at one point you know you have the front row, so you have like, this little wall in front of that you can like put all your food or drink on or whatever. Sure, which is nice. You don't have to like put it on the ground. Uh, so that's where Luke's sprite was. But at one point, like he like we stood up and like it got like bumped and like fell onto the field basically, or you know behind the Georgia Tech players or whatever. Right, but. Um, one of the players like saw the cup fall and like looked up and he could see like Luke looked so upset and he like went over and picked it up and like uh took like one of their Gatorade bottles and like filled it back up for him and like brought it back to him. Why? And I was like, that was so cool. Thank you so much. So that was really cool. One of the Georgia Tech players. One of the Georgia that? Tech players did it. Dang! Yeah. Shout out to Georgia <laughs> Tech. I know. So man, shout out that's... to whoever you were. I don't know. Uh, I doubt you listened to the pop. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. That was very nice. There you go. Yeah. Um, if, if anybody <clears throat> listening goes to Georgia Tech, we should try to we should try to like permeate. Yeah. Uh, we should probably uh, amongst the Georgia Tech campus. So we can yeah. get, get I, to this I, player. I don't remember. I want to say it was. I want to say the number was twenty three. Twenty three. I think. I okay. think that's what it was. I don't know. Um. But whoever you were, 
Thanks so much. What a, what a great show of sportsmanship because we were very clearly supporting the other team. But right, yeah. Just, yeah. That was sweet, though. That's really cool. Yeah, That's that really was cool. cool. And it was like a souvenir cup, so we still have the cup. Yes. Yeah, so that was cool. That was cool. Outstanding. But yeah. well, I mean, it sounds like a success. It sounds I think like it was. Win. I think it was a big fun. I think Luke had a blast. Um, I think he would definitely go back. Um, I would bring headphones next time. Yeah. But overall, yeah. very positive experience uh, despite the loss. Outstanding. So, yeah. <laughs> Transition. So speaking of Luke and Cups, Ben. Okay. Yeah. I have another story for you. What do you got for me? Um, so uh, I'm sure you remember my sunflower escapades over the summer. Abso- when, absolutely. Absolutely. B- bazooka. With Bazooka Jack. Bazooka Jack. Yeah. The the The, the terror. Yeah. <laughs> As he is known. Um, yeah, that was yeah, we 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 went through, we played with the sunflower seeds, but um, we also like have out in our garage this like just big uh, Tupperware bin, like sensory bin full of beans. And um, Luke was playing out with them in the driveway one day, and like we had done all the mulch and stuff, and some of them just sort of like got like scattered into the dirt, and like in the process of like you know shoveling everything, some of them got buried in the dirt. And much to my surprise, these beans that have just been sitting out in the open in my garage for you know six months, a year, I don't know, right, <clears throat> just dried beans. Um, sprouted and started growing bean plants like in my little front garden. I was like, wow, I did not think those would like had like life in them still. Right. No, they, yeah. At that point in time, it's like, this, this is, it'd be like getting like, like a package of like, like sunflower seeds. I don't know, like salted sunflower seeds, yeah. I guess. And thinking like that they were still capable of like growing as plants maybe they just are now, yeah. now that i'm saying this out loud it's like people are like yeah that's a thing that's that, a that, thing yeah that will still, still work they are seeds yeah, yeah. It turns out yeah so anyway i remember thinking that was like i remember just being like whoa i can't believe that worked but like a couple weeks ago luke um had some beans and he was like i want to plant some beans and i was like well i don't really want to go out and plant beans or anything but but i had like a, a like spur of the moment idea where i just like grabbed a cup and i just went out and grabbed some potting soil and we took a bean and like i knew it would grow because it had done it in the garden we put it like you know one inch down put some water on it put it on the windowsill and i was like all right luke let's check it we'll we'll come back and check in like two days or something right and right see if the bean has grown and like sure enough like yeah two three days later you can see a little bean sprout coming up and ben i I kid you not it's like 18 inches tall now what it, we ha- we're sitting on our windowsill above our seat we have this like super tall like little bean plant going that's amazing yeah i am like i'm like surprised i'm like having as much fun with it as luke i'm yeah. like look at this bean we got going <laughs> we're, we're gonna have plenty of beans we're gonna to go have around. We're, but ben turns out we are gonna have plenty of beans to go around because that's where the story is heading oh dear oh dear yeah. so anyway another thing luke likes to do is just like uh like plan the dirt you know naturally yeah i is. mean who doesn't right. yeah, yeah who doesn't who doesn't so so um, uh, sometimes you know, he'll just be out like in the in the garden, just like, I don't know, digging up dirt, searching for gold. Sometimes you know how it is when you're a kid and you, there's just gold in the ground and you're digging for it. And he'll come and inform me that he's found gold. And I'm like, that's tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> this is can you show great me? news? And it's like, uh, these look like rocks, but hey, OK. <laughs> you know, I think when we were kids, there was one night I remember very distinctly where we were digging and we thought we were going to dig up like the case of every single genuine artifact from Star Wars. Yeah. When I think we spent the whole night just being like, ooh, dibs on green lightsaber dibs for Luke. Dibs on dibs. And it was like we, everything we could possibly think of. I think there were like ships. Yeah. That like, like full-size Millennium Falcon ships were going to be inside of this like chest that might be in our backyard <laughs> yeah, in, in Rocky Mountain, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyway, uh, he's just out there one day like any other day playing in the dirt. And apparently what he was actually doing was he had grabbed like a ton of beans from the from the sensory bin. And having seen the success of the bean in the window, he literally went through and like planted them in the ground all over the front garden. Amazing. <laughs> so, so now it's been like three or four days and it's like rained and stuff. And he came out yesterday and he was like, wait, daddy, daddy, look. And he like pointed at this thing and he was like, look. And I was like, did you play a bean? He was like, yes. <laughs> so I was like so excited. And I was like, that's so cool that you like, you just did that all, all in your own. But they got a text from Beth earlier today. And apparently he planted like a ton of them. <laughs> they're just like sprouting all over the place. Today he has our bean so farmers. So now we're bean farmers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so funny that he just thought to do it and it's working and he managed to keep it a secret this is it's I like know. it's like the gold thing except it works i know 
<laughs> so I'm just I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I'm like yeah, I'm just gonna let them grow. <laughs> I know. Well, we're having a very uh, very unseasonably warm fall. So, yeah, yeah you know. that's the other thing. I'm like, probably they're not going to last long because, like, I had like a light frost on my uh, car this morning. But you know, who's to say? Who's to say? No, I, I honestly, on this exact note, I have, I have a rather hilarious story as well, which is that. Um, Alice and I, the, earlier this year, if you watched, you know, my, my vlog and stuff, you know that we were setting up, like, raised bed gardens, yeah. kind of using those, like, like troughs, like feeding troughs for, yeah. uh, like, cows and stuff. And um, we have had so much fun with it. I mean, like, I ran, like, you know, irrigation lines. And, of course, we had, like, our famous, like, pumpkin patch that, like, accidentally grew out of, like, my compost heap and just yeah. took over my driveway. We ended up getting, like, seven really nice pumpkins out of it, which has been really cool. That's nice. like what I decorated my house with for, for the fall holidays. Um, but amongst the rest of the plants that we had done, we had like sort of like mixed results. Like, of course we'd like tomatoes and we got tons of tomatoes and we did cucumbers and we got a bunch of cucumbers and zucchini and stuff. Um, jalapenos were probably like my prize. You know, I like when Ben's went absolutely, jalapenos. I know went, went crazy <clears throat> with the jalapenos. They're still, still coming off the vine like crazy, uh, or the plant. They're not vines. Um, just for clarity, um, people are like, I'm calling you out right now. Jalapenos don't grow on vines. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that we had that was really funny was we were growing bell peppers because Alice and I have this like Italian sausage dish that we like to make. And we we're like, this would be like really fun if we can like grow our own bell peppers and, you know, use obviously the peppers from the plant in our recipe. Uh, and so all season we have had successfully one pepper, like what? slowly, <laughs> slowly grow out and it's a red bell pepper plant so i have this huge like softball size uh like green pepper for like probably like 50 days you know yeah. it's just like it's like come on like please change to red and so like finally it's like it's turning red it's turning red and like alice and i are going out like after dinner every night to like check on our one pepper right like, we're, like, like we're gonna get it best case scenario we're gonna have to like still buy other peppers to complete the recipe yeah but like we're like at this point we're so excited for like our one pepper. Yeah. We've been like carefully watching. So we're finally getting to the point where like it's it's almost entirely red. And I have ordered groceries and I got like the rest of the like every other piece of the ingredients in order to make this dish. And like it's like, it's basically going to be the next day is like harvest day. Oh no. And so oh, no. I know. I know. Did you so, get bazooka jacked? Well, so uh, we go outside and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go pick <clears> the pepper. <throat> like it's happening. We go outside and it's gone. No. And we're like, I was like, I have uh, the, like everything else is in my fridge right now. Like every other piece of the recipe. Like I was like, no freaking. And I, you know, I call Alice and I'm like, Alice, like, did you pick the pepper? And she's like, no. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, and of course, I, I mean, on the whole, we're talking about like 80 cents you yeah, know, right. worth of produce like, or something. Pepper is pretty cheap object. Right. Yeah. Like, but like, you know, I had like a relationship with this pepper. I understand. You know, and yeah. I was just like, I can't believe it. Like it was, it was so, it was such a lovely pepper. It was so beautiful. And it was like, it was just gone. And I, and I was like, I, I was completely floored. And so that night, the, like the other weirdest thing happens, uh, which is that Alice pulls into our driveway and she calls me and she's like, hey, come outside. And I'm like, OK. And I'm like, guarantee she found the pepper. And I was oh. like, it must have fallen off the plant or something like no big deal. We go over. <clears> we got our huge pumpkin patch, which is taken up again, our whole like other half of the driveway. And we walk up. Someone has left a small, like small, like pumpkin inside of our pumpkin patch. Like what? Yeah. Like a bright orange, like, like the small ones, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? That are like maybe like six inches in diameter, like a yeah. small bright orange pumpkin. So we're down to one bright red pepper and we have like someone has left inside of our actively growing pumpkin vine, a pumpkin. That's weird. Yeah. And I'm like, what <laughs> is going on with our garden? Man. Um, and we, we live like nearby enough to like a middle school that like in my mind, I'm like, I wonder if there's like kids that are like walking to school and they've been like watching this stuff happen. And they're like, you want to be really funny is if we like mess with them, you know, and like, right. Like, like do something. Yeah. Cause it seems like the type of thing we would have done sure. as kids. Like this will be a head scratcher. makes uh, no sense. I'll Why tell would... you what I'm going to start doing to people for pranks, man, is just bean bomb their front yard. You know? <laughs> just, just, 
<laughs> Here, take some fresh compost and some beans. See ya. Right, right, right. Oh, you're going on vacation? That's cool. It's cool. It's going to someone to water your plants. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm just going to stick beans everywhere. I'm just going to plant beans everywhere. Um, so anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like just in such confusion. Yeah. This whole situation. So uh, it's been, and it's been like weeks since all of this has happened. Oh, okay. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you know. I, I don't know what to do. So finally, we're having Addison's birthday and a couple of Alice's friends come over and they're like, did you find our pumpkin? And uh, we're like, you, you, you left, the, left pumpkin. the pumpkin. And it was like, no way. Like, why? You know, and they're like, we just thought it'd be hilarious. And I was like, it was, yeah. but I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> um, so it was like this, like very funny, like, okay, okay. There's a piece of the puzzle. Did you steal our pepper? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was like, they're like, you know, such like just nice down to earth people. And it was like exactly the type of quirky joke they might do, but it was like, it seems very unlikely that they would like make this exchange in their head. Yeah. And so like, no, we didn't take your pepper. And I was like, Oh, what? If only, if, if only. only, if only. So, you know, it's like, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But so anyway, we're having this like very unseasonably warm fall. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I basically had like written off the entire vegetable garden. I was actually going out to just start pulling stuff out so that they're just like empty and ready for next year. Yeah. And I walk over and my pepper plant is just like covered in peppers all of a sudden. What? There's like six bell peppers growing. <gasps> That's and I'm like, crazy. This is awesome and so i'm texting uh with my my aquarium company i have two guys that work there uh and we're, we're in like our group chat going back and forth about stuff and like when you're doing aquarium work you're carrying lots of like heavy buckets and doing like it, it's it, there there's a layer of manual labor to it and so they were complaining about just like how warm it was because there was like it's supposed to be cooler by now and i'm yeah. not supposed to be this hot um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I know like my, my pepper plant has like started like taking off again. Um, which is like crazy. Cause it only grew one pepper the whole year. And <laughs> oh, one of the no. guys in the chat goes, oh man, I totally forgot to tell you. I took your other pepper. And I was like, no, what? he's like, I was watching it for like a week. Cause I have a station at my house that they can fill up water for their, for the trucks. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I was at your house and I was, I was filling up and he was like, I thought it looked like it had a couple like spots on it, which I think were like the green spots that like hadn't fully turned. Uh-huh. And so I don't know maybe that's what he was, he was basing it off or whatever, but he was like, yeah, I just assumed you guys didn't want it cause it had been out there forever. <laughs> so I took it and I was like, no, oh my you have God. no idea. <laughs> I call call Alice right away. I'm like, you are not going to believe what information I just learned. <laughs> oh man, that is hilarious. Oh my gosh, the case of the missing bell pepper. You had, you had a lot of mysteries happening out in that garden, Ben. It was, it was, and I couldn't believe how it was all coming together. I was like, this is just like, like this is the most unusual thing. But my, my but my driveway does uh, like when I planted the garden, I was worried that people were going to come and like take stuff from it yeah sure i mean um, people like yeah yeah it is like high traffic by a bunch of like teenagers it, every it, day exactly so like i i knew there was like some risk when we like when we set it up to begin with yeah and I, I i was sort of like anticipating a bit of that so when it happened i think on the most part i was just like well it happened you know but someone took my pepper i couldn't i could not believe the fact that i had these two super bizarre mysteries both of which like within a week of each other resolved themselves yeah and i was like but but it had been like weeks since they either of them had happened too. right so like it was so likely this was just going to go on forever and never be resolved yeah anyway so if i if i get any more peppers i'll be sure to right. <laughs> yeah well yeah please let me know <laughs> i'll be sure to show them to you um either way i feel like we found ourselves at a good stopping point you got here. pepper jacked i got pepper jacked <laughs> <laughs> ah, i get it like pepper yeah that's a good one <laughs> I do love me some pepper jack cheese. No doubt. T T B H. Yeah. Um, anyway, I feel like we've reached a good stopping point. For I this think so. The pop guys. Thank you so much for tuning in as ever. If you have any feedback for us, I do read all of the emails that come in. If you want to send them over to popcorn culture pod at gmail.com. I always love reading what you guys have to say. It's always very witty and hilarious. Uh, it's been a while since we've had some corny jokes. So if you feel like you got a good corny joke, you want to send our way. Excuse me, Ben. We had gorgeous. Gorg okay. <laughs> any gourd related humor. I'm all, yeah. Yeah. For. I mean, that's a straight um, up vegetable right, joke, right? right? It's pretty corny. It's pretty. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> like, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Um, yeah, we can send those over to popcorn, popcorn, popcorn culture pod at gmail.com. There it is. Is that it? Yeah. Is that even the right email? Yeah. Do I even have it right? It's that's what I'm used to you saying anyway. <clears throat> okay. I'll take it. 
give it a shot. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, otherwise, if you'd like to support us over on Patreon, we do have a really cool uh, exclusive merch offering going on right now at the $25 tier, which is that uh, we are going to be doing an exclusive episode of uh, Jay and I's first ever D&D campaign what? experience. Uh, and with that exclusive digital download will also be um, a set of popcorn culture themed uh, RPG dice. We'll have a complete yeah. set, all seven die. Uh, we worked with um, a really like awesome artist on having all the faces customized and everything. They're going to be just, I think they're going to be just absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to see them in person. Um, so if you'd like to sign up for that, it's patreon.com slash popcorn culture and click the exclusive merch tier. But otherwise, until next time, pop, pop. pop.